NASA is considering using a nuclear detonation to prevent an asteroid from hitting the moon. Really? Yes, really. How serious is the situation? I've had a look. You've almost certainly heard of the asteroid in question. It's been called 2024 YR4, discovered at the end of last year. It made big headlines in January and February because early calculations gave it more than a 1% chance of hitting Earth on December 22nd, 2032. This would be bad news because the asteroid has an estimated size of about 60 meters across and is probably made of stone, as data from the James Webb Space Telescope reveal. This is about as large as the asteroid that's believed to have hit the Tunguska region of Siberia in 1908. This asteroid didn't hit the ground but probably exploded a few kilometers above ground in the air. That released several megatons of energy and flattened more than 2,000 square kilometers of forest. A similar incident happened in 2013 over the Russian city Chelyabinsk. This asteroid was somewhat smaller, roughly 20 meters in diameter estimates say. It exploded about 20 kilometers above ground, but the shock wave still blew out windows over hundreds of square kilometers. This injured more than 1,000 people, mostly from flying glass. So if the newly discovered asteroid would hit Earth, it wouldn't be an extinction event, but still almost certainly serious regional damage. However, as astronomers collected more data about the new asteroid, the probability that it had hit Earth drop to basically zero. But what made far less headlines is that the probability that it'll hit the moon increased to almost 4%. Now, you could say 4% still isn't much, but it's large enough to seriously think about what to do in case the impact probability goes up with further observations. Why worry about a rock hitting the moon? This asteroid isn't big enough to move the moon or seriously damage it, but it would blast out a lot of debris and much of that debris would fall down on Earth. This could damage satellites, raise risks for astronauts, and a few of the debris pieces might even even reach the ground. They'd also make a lot of shooting stars. And who wouldn't like an excuse to use a nuclear bomb? So here we go. In this new paper by a NASA-led team, astronomers consider two different options. The first is deflection. This means that you give the asteroid a small push early on that makes it miss the target. But there are two problems with this solution. One is that we don't have a terrible lot of time. You might say that 2032 is far in the future, but think about how long it takes to get a NASA mission going. By the time we manage to get the thing on the way, a small push would no longer suffice. The other problem is that the astronomers say, given what we know of the asteroid, the push would probably just break it up. They say we'd be better off with option two, that's to just blast the thing into small fragments that spread out so that most of them will miss and the rest will be harmless. This could be done either by a heavy projectile hitting the asteroid, but more easily with a nuclear detonation in its vicinity. They say the best way to do it would be with a bomb yield of some 100 kilotons, which is about 10 times the Hiroshima bomb. This would be detonated about 12 meters away from the asteroid. The nuclear bomb would cause intense X-rays that would rip the asteroid apart. With only 12 meters distance though, there isn't a lot of wiggle room for error. The easier way to do it would be a one megaton nuclear bomb at about 85 meters distance. They calculate that this operation will have to be done no later than one month before the expected impact. Besides preventing debris from hitting us, nuking this asteroid would be a great way to test how we deal with an actually serious threat to us. Either way though, besides updating our observations of the asteroid, the NASA group says we should also send an explorer mission in the vicinity of the asteroid to inspect the surface and its most likely composition ahead of time. I love talking about asteroid deflection because in my mind it's one of the few areas where we're actually making great progress at protecting life on Earth. So why doesn't NASA just go for it? In this, as in most other cases, the thing that stands most in the way is paperwork. No, you can't just detonate a nuclear bomb in space, not even if you're NASA. There are rules for everything. 
really, I think our biggest extinction risk is bureaucracy. Yes, I do read a lot of news and know that chatbots still aren't any good at writing my scripts. But what does help me a lot is Ground News. Ground News is a news platform that collects and summarizes news, which has been published all over the world. Not only do they collect all articles on the same story in one place and give you a quick summary, they also give you a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. A curious case I came across the other day is this story about robot rabbits that are being used in Florida as lures for snakes. This basically wasn't covered on the political right, which is weird, don't you think? You also get a factuality check for each news item. And here you see who owns the media outlets and where the news has appeared. Ground News also has this great feature called Blind Spot. This tells you which news has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. And of course, I have a special offer for you. That's a 40% discount on the Vantage plan, which gives you access to all their features. All you need to do is use my link ground.news or use the QR code. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.